go ahead. I have to wrap up in a second here, but go ahead. Thank you, Jen. You put out a list of all of the military yeah. equipment included in that $400 million, $800 million yeah. that's being provided to Ukraine. Among those items, let me read them to you, 100 grenade launchers, 5,000 rifles, 1,000 pistols, 400 machine guns, and 400 shotguns. Are you saying those items are not offensive weapons? They're weapons that help the Ukrainian people fight against an invasion by a foreign country. They can be used offensively, can they not? Again, they're weapons. What I'm talking about is weapons that can be yes. used to the, fight. The answer is yes. I mean, although you don't want to say it, that answer to that question is yes. And so, obviously, you're trying to make this distinction between offensive Well, what we're talking about, let me weapons. finish, let me finish. Well, let me we're finish, let me finish my, let me finish my you answer. Make, no, you are, no, I was finishing a point, and then you can respond to my Okay, answer. go ahead. All right, you're making this distinction between offensive and defensive weapons. Anybody that looks at that list of weapons that I just mentioned, they would say, clearly they're offensive. If a Ukrainian military uh, officer or someone who is enlisted has one of these weapons, they can take out uh, a Russian military official of some sort with these weapons. They're offensive in nature. So why not provide more offensive weapons like this to the Ukrainian military? Well, first of all, we are providing a range of rifles, etc. There is a difference between a plane and planes and massive military systems, I think anybody would recognize this, uh, and what we're talking about, which is giving rifles and pistols to many of them farmers and people living in countrysides to defend themselves. I think there's a difference that most people recognize. Thank you everyone so much. Have a nice day.